sparks are flying again. Brooklyn Nets, LA Lakers talking trade talks between Russell Westbrook, Kyrie Irving, maybe some draft picks, maybe THT, old Taylor Horton Tucker, and Brian Windhorst was told by multiple NBA executives that this is happening. So we're going to be diving into what's possibly going to be happening here soon. Is it going to take into the NBA season? I don't care about contracts, legalities, if it works out or not. It's just straight up. What do these trade pieces mean and will it benefit both teams and who can win a championship from it? And I am your NBA white guy. In this channel, I talk all things hoops from a hooper's perspective and I get very opinionated. And if you like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you click the bell so you're notified every time I do a new video. Now again, all of this was sparked by Kyrie Irving not taking the $6 million veterans deal and we all knew that wasn't gonna happen. I know he's made $200 million, but I think deep down, Kyrie and KD, even though the news and the media, they wanna tear these two apart, you really haven't heard them say anything about each other. So again, coming from a Hooper's perspective, I truly feel like those two still want to play together. And so Kyrie really wanted to get to, to have Brooklyn actually give them a long-term contract. That was really what sparked the whole thing. And then when they didn't, which I really don't blame them, that's what made KD say, I want out of here too. And then there was the grumblings between the coach. I think what, what Kevin's trying to do is just play hardball and possibly get him and his homie Kyrie to stay long-term in Brooklyn. Obviously, Kevin's got a four-year deal and he wants out. That's really where I believe the first roadblock is. They've kind of got to move KD to see what they get. But imagine this concept. You have Kevin Durant and you, and you trade him. You're going to get all-stars and probably a, a handful of picks. You get rid of Kyrie, the Lakers are desperate right now. It's literally the only out that the Lakers have. Now there's some other grumblings of possibly the, the, the Pacers and some of these other teams, but look, Kyrie wants to probably stay in Brooklyn, play with KD, but he would not mind, and he's been very open about playing with LeBron again. So this is something that I feel with LeBron uh, possibly getting Kyrie and maybe even getting, like, really reaching, getting a Joe Harris from Brooklyn, and that would really entice the Lakers to get rid of those two picks and to get rid of THT. Let's really break this down. What I think that core nucleus trade would do for both teams again not talking about salary caps and money just straight up the lakers are looking to win a championship the number one thing that the lakers have a problem with right now they are zero threat to shoot the ball and even if they're out there on the wing they got anybody out there nobody cares so they're gonna double up they're gonna pack the paint they're gonna you know hit that that pick and roll with ad and lebron they're gonna get three guys on it and they're gonna tell westbrook go ahead shoot it you're literally gonna hit the side of the backboard every time you release it now i love westbrook and his mentality and how hard he plays and I think as a second tier player uh, or just a, a genuine just 38 minute you know a night point guard going and get you triple double he's a heck of a player it just doesn't fit this system because they're trying to slow him down they're trying to make him do something different and it's messing with his head get him out there on another team and let him just absolutely ball out he's going to help you win some games and he's going to go get his triple doubles and he's not going to be talked about in this light but getting rid of him because you are no threat to shoot or to make a shot that's the number one killer that the lakers have see when lebron got to the lakers they had all that young talent and everybody wants to look at ingram and Randall and, and Kuzma and all these dudes and be like, oh, look at what the Lakers got rid of. Well, at the end of the day, it was a bunch of young dudes who were athletic who just couldn't really shoot. And LeBron knew that. So they traded, got some pieces, got some development. KCP was a hell of a defender. And you also got AC Fresh Caruso to play stellar defense and actually hit some corner threes. And it really spread the floor out and they were able to win. Plus, Anthony Davis was actually shooting pretty decent from the three-point line, stretching out the big man. They were way more spread out. And you have to think, who's the new coach of the Lakers right now? It's Darvin Ham. He runs a four-out system. He's going to have four dudes out around the perimeter. You can't do that when the entire team can't shoot. They will literally allow you to just shoot all game and shoot yourself in the foot, basically. So now they're going to trade these two first-round picks, 2027, 2029, possibly Taylor Horton Tucker. I think it's a great idea. Trade those pieces over to Brooklyn to get Kyrie. If they just get Kyrie, I'm still excited about it. Kyrie is a dude with Anthony Davis healthy. They will have to respect all three of these players. This is something that now they can drop down to AD. He can go to work, LeBron and you get, uh, you know, Irving out on the perimeter, they can knock down threes. You at least have to extend your defense out. If you double AD, he can kick. Now, if you run pick and roll with either LeBron or Kyrie, 
it's going to completely open up the floor because you cannot double these dudes or pack the paint anymore because of the shooting. And especially, I know Joe Harris has some injury issues in the past, but the dude is a threat. And again, as a Hooper's mentality and a Hooper's thought, when you know this dude can shoot, it's the same thing with Klay Thompson. When Klay Thompson's out there on the floor the entire playoffs, they still had guys in his face and he could not hit the broad side of a barn in the playoffs. But what it did is it opened up the entire court because you just never forget how good these dudes are. And when they're shooting 40 plus plus percent from three and then whether they did it a year ago or not that is making your defense work twice as hard so you have to think about these things in a different perspective is that hey even if this dude may not come in and shoot as, as good as he ever did before you have to be out there on defense he is a threat the big question to me seems to be why the heck would brooklyn even do this take on a massive contract of westbrook here's a few reasons i see that you could make the argument one yes when you trade Kyrie for westbrook you're actually going backwards with the money westbrook's going to make more but when you get those two picks and Westbrook's only on a one-year deal you're basically saying hey we're not going to win it anyways we just kind of got to get through this year with him and then we're done with that massive contract we've soaked up the two picks from the Lakers first round we got all of those picks from Philly when we got rid of Harden and now we have this core nucleus and whatever we got if we got rid of Kevin Durant which I think you're almost going to have to that whole relationship's done you're going to have so many picks and you may have collected some incredible young pieces and you're on a rebuild and now you got a dude like THT Taylor Horton Tucker again is one of these dudes when you let him go when the Lakers actually put him on the second rotation and he had to come in and score because LeBron was sitting the biggest thing that I hate about you know any of these LeBron teammates or teams is that when he sits they will literally blow 10 15 point leads every time it's got to be the most frustrating thing it's frustrating for me to watch and only imagine LeBron the THT would go in because they knew he could get buckets so he just didn't get the minutes I think that's why you see a Julius Randle and a Random Ingram really excel when they leave LeBron is because LeBron's going to run that point. He's going to orchestrate everything. He's just trying to get through the regular season, get me to the playoffs, and, and then we will go, you know, win the championship. So when you kind of, you know, uh, delegate these roles to these players and it actually shrinks their role a little bit, I think that's why they don't look as good sometimes. But at the same time, when you have, you know, players who know their role, LeBron always gets them paid. He's gotten more players paid in this league than any human possible because they come in, they accept the role, they shoot they shoot the lights out they play a defensive role and now they look like an absolute all-star i mean he got della vadova like a 40 million dollar contract so this is something that you you have to look at both sides when you have an absolute dog like a tht go out and get you 20 points a night sometimes those roles are just a little bit you know, crunched in. But when you actually get a role player to come in, you know, just like an Alex Caruso, you look at him last year playing that defensive role and the point guard running point and, and hitting just corner threes when he needed to, but basically getting his hand on every ball that came in, causing turnovers and getting, you know, the bench into it. Those are the small things. Even when the white boy do the headband thing, go up and dunk on some dude, you have to realize what that does to a team and to the chemistry. Chemistry is everything. I'm telling you, I've played on these teams, you know, all through college to where if this big, massive play happens especially like kind of a role player you would not believe how tight that makes a team especially if you start ripping off some dubs so these are some trades i think that you know by getting rid of them to brooklyn i think brooklyn actually can look at this as a positive and say look Kyrie may not even play this year and he's on a one-year deal at the end of this year we lose him we get nothing so that's what you have to think about too is that brooklyn can actually get a you know a pretty much a king's ransom two first round picks and maybe a, a, a young star and you're on a rebuild and this kid's 22 years old you've got set you know curry there who can shoot shoot you got ben simmons don't forget about him everybody wants to blast on these players i know simmons is just wacky and i don't know what the heck he's thinking with you know all this back stuff but the dude can flat out play he's not a guy who's going to have to lead or to lead your organization he's not going to be a leading scorer but he's six foot ten six foot eleven can run the point and distribute now you get some knockdown you know shooters uh like seth curry you get an absolute all-star with these 500 draft picks that you got you develop some of these thts and these young players you're gonna have a good team there and Brooklyn for a really long time and you're now getting rid of just massive massive cap space with Kevin Durant and Kyrie which just inevitably is not going to work out and now I need you to comment down below do you think Brooklyn should trade Kyrie I just am curious to know I really think that they should maybe because I want him to go play with LeBron again and I want Westbrook out of there but I do feel as if Brooklyn's going to be rebooting with with Kevin Durant wanting out this is probably the best play you can possibly do comment down below your thoughts this is the NBA white guy and if if you like this kind of content and my honest opinion i'm always right then make sure you tap that subscribe button and you click the bell and until the next video my homies we'll catch you later